I wanted to kind of do a review uh, to kind of switch things up a little bit on Little Things, a movie starring Rami Malek, Denzel Washington, and Jared Leto. Um, the reason being is this movie has so many similar uh, context to an earlier film uh, that would drop in 1997, if I'm not mistaken, the movie Seven. And you can really tell that there's a 1990s kind of feel for it um, that helps and hurts it at the same time. Um, it's good to kind of relive a little bit of that 90s nostalgia uh, that you can get. But this movie definitely kind of goes in a very far right you know, direction. It, it went, and what I mean by that is it just it really veers off into where you think this is naturally going to go. So <clears throat> to kind of give you a little bit of a backstory, Deke, who's played by Denzel Washington, is a uh, former L.A. County uh, detective who is haunted by a case, a case that he badly misplayed his hand. And when some LA County disappearance have kind of, have kind of happening, he works with Rami Malik after some kind of back and forth uh, with it um, to uh, solve this case. About 40 minutes into this movie, you get introduced to uh, Jared Leto, who is kind of this weird guy that, is heavily pointed to, to actually being the killer. Um, so very similar right there, you get the idea of where Seven kind of kicks in. Um, because in this case, Kevin Spacey, after a series of, of murders kind of uh, shows up and kind of overplays his hand. Uh, this movie falls down this path and I have to start out by saying the pacing is off with it. And also the script writing is off with it as well. There are some times where you're where you hear a line and it's it's a little cringeworthy, but then sometimes you get a lot of a lot of great you know background study with it. But the kind of the main driver of this story is is you know when you have a title called Little Things, you want to sit there and, and really kind of dissect this movie, what exactly happening, uh, where where is this movie going to go? Is this really is this really what's actually happening? Things along those lines. So uh, performance-wise, <clears throat> Denzel, you can't really complain about. Um, some of the lines may not have been the greatest, but uh, Denzel brings that grittiness and kind of that that over analytical thinking uh, going uh, going into that. Uh, Rami Malek, this is a little weird. He may have actually been the weakest of the actors, but it's how the character was actually written. He's this hot shot LA County guy that ego is brittle. I mean, you're waiting for the cracks to show up because there's, there's always, you think he's trying to hold it in together and you feel like he's trying to hold it in together for most of this movie um, until you basically get to the last third act of this movie is when those cracks really start to show. And because those cracks really start to show, you start seeing massive mistakes that as a police officer kind of, kind of jumps the shark a little bit for, for this movie. As a police officer, you would look at this and, and begin screaming at the, at the movie because you're wondering why is he doing this? Why, why isn't he waiting? Um, and then finally, Jared Leto who plays this ultra creepy guy who is antagonistic as, as everything. He knows exactly the cards he's trying to play and he's pushing buttons, just very similar to how Kevin Spacey did. Um, it's a little different from Kevin Spacey and uh, Leto because Spacey was a little bit more reserved uh, with it um, where he's kind of pushing the buttons. Whereas Leto is is very very obviously like like trying to get under these guys' skins. Um, this movie is, as I said earlier, is a slow burn. It takes a while for it to kind of get its point, and because of that, in my eyes, it kind of hurts the movie a little bit. Because after a while, you're just kind of like, okay, like let's get to the point. Let's 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 start moving. Um, it's edited not the greatest. Uh, you'll get a lot of, I don't want to say fast cuts, but not a lot of enticing shots to kind of, to kind of fill the atmosphere of the scene itself. And because of that, um, you're not, you're not always certain exactly what you're seeing. 
unfortunately, uh, female roles in this kind of kind of play tropes. You have the 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 loving wife of Rami Malek. Then you have the the uh, honest but caring, you know, um, the honest but caring uh, ex-wife who kind of plays a small role. Then you have the girl who who you know helped to kind of cover everything up. And then you have the girl that you know might have possibly uh, it, it kind of becomes useless uh, in the middle of a case because she has some biases with it. Um, what about some of the good with this movie? Well, it does leave you guessing. Um, it does leave you kind of wondering where uh, the movie is going to kind of go. Uh, I am going to say uh, the ending of this film, it depends on how you want to look at it um, because there's basically two ways to kind of interpret it. Um, most of most movies like this, they give you definitive answers, but I think we all realize that there's a lot of cases that kind of just go and, you know, you have TV shows like the first 48 where they go and basically say, Hey, these cases aren't always solved. Sometimes a bad guy wins. Sometimes a bad guy gets away with everything. Um, and that definitely hurts it. Uh, and in this case, it leads to, I don't want to say similar uh, ending because once you kind of start breaking things down, you 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 kind of see what what's going on. But this is more of a movie about the dealings and uh, the dealings that cops have to go through, um, and sometimes how this can really mess with the mentality of uh, with the mentality of everybody. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're good cops or bad cops. Just it's not. <clears throat> you can't just be asking for results and expect that results will always pop up because of it. Um, I think it really leads to, to a good point with that. And that definitely helps the movie. I personally like the ending. Uh, it's not the reason why is, is it gives the idea of whatever you, whatever way you want to look at it, there's closure for both characters. So that's kind of where I'm going to leave that at. Uh, if I was to score this movie, I think the pacing's a little bit slow. Um, there's not a whole lot of action, but the story is at least interesting enough to want to, uh, to make me want to see it play out. Uh, the ending, it, it's the ending is what's going to make or break this movie, right? Because a lot of people are going to say, "Oh, well, that's dumb," and then a lot of people are going to say, "Well, in real life situation, that probably does really happen." Now stuff has really changed since the nineties. And that's exactly why I say the nineties setting really helps out there. Um, but you kind of, kind of get the idea of where, of where things are going. So, uh, with that being said, if I was to score this movie, uh, out of a 10, I'd probably give this a six out of 10. Um, I don't necessarily think this movie is very rewatchable. Um, but it's, it's one of those that you see it, you experience it, you say, huh, and it'll be stuck in your head for a couple of days. And then afterwards, you'll, you'll just say, okay, well, I'm, I'm glad I saw that movie. I'm probably ne never going to watch it again. But yeah, so that's my score. Six out of ten. Go check it out. And as always, if you uh, wish to find more of our content, uh, please click on the links to the side here uh, as they'll link you to, future, uh, to other episodes that we've also done. Thanks so much for watching.